Hi, and welcome to High School Physics Explained. Today, I'm gonna demonstrate something with this ramp that I made a week or so ago. And you can see that I've made actually three ramps, all with slightly different inclinations, a red one, a white one, and a blue one. And you'll also notice that they all start off at the same height and end at the same height. And I'm gonna roll three metal balls from the end of the ramp. I'm gonna ask you the questions. Number one, which one will arrive first, second, and then last? And which one will leave at the greatest velocity? So let's see and find out. Well, did you expect that? The blue one rose first, then the white, and then the red. But did you notice they all had the same range? That means that they all left at exactly the same velocity. So why is that? Well, today we're gonna to answer those questions and discuss the law of conservation of energy. So stay tuned. So here I have a diagram of our setup. And before we talk about the law of conservation of energy, we just need to quickly look at the physics just in terms of the experiment. So here I have my metal ball and I place it on top of the ramp. And the ball of course rolls down the ramp and then off the ramp with a certain velocity and then lands at a certain displacement away from the tabletop. Let's break that down. Well, the first thing I do is I raise the ball up. So in other words, I'm doing work to the ball. So that work, in this case, causes a change in potential energy. So my work done on my ball is equal to the delta U, my change in potential energy, and that is equal to mgh. And my h in this case is the height that I raise it at. In this case, the height ends up being 24 centimeters. Now the ball of loses that potential energy. The gravitational field is doing the work now. And so what we have is a drop in potential energy, but the outcome is, is we end up getting a gain in kinetic energy. Now, regardless of the path of the ball, they all end up leaving at the same velocity. Now, how do I know that? Well, I determined the velocity by using simple projectile motion analysis. They all landed at roughly the same position. Now, the blue ball and the white ball landed at 57 and 58 centimetres. The red ball was slightly different, but it's roughly the same. And so because they travelled under projectile motion, I can work out the velocity at which they leave. Now, I'm not going to do the calculations here, but the calculations end up being around 1.36 metres per second. So in other words, the balls all had the same mass, they all left at the same velocity, so they all had the same kinetic energy. In fact, they have the same change in kinetic energy because the kinetic energy at the top of the ramp is zero. So my delta K is equal to a half mv squared, and this is, of course, the same for all three balls. They all ended up having the same loss of potential energy, and they all ended up having the same gain in kinetic energy. What does that mean? Well, that means that if I have my total potential energy at the beginning and my total kinetic energy at the beginning, and we'll call this naught, that ended up being the same total potential energy at the end plus my total kinetic energy at the end. So in other words, the total energy that they had at the beginning was equal to the total energy they had at the end. And that's the concept of the law of conservation of energy. Let's explore that a little closer by using this great animation from the University of Colorado FET team. So here I have my animation from FET and I'm going to place my skater on top of the ramp and I'm going to also show you a bar graph that, tows, that shows us the total energy that they have plus also their kinetic and their potential energy. Can you predict what the graph looks like when I place the skater at the top of the ramp? And then can you predict what's gonna to happen to those bar graphs as the skater goes down the ramp? Well, you can see my total energy is simply the total potential energy that they have. When I let it go, that potential energy drops, but at the same time, their kinetic energy increases and of course reverses as we go to the other side of the ramp. Can you see that the total energy doesn't change? If I now add a pie chart, it'll also help you understand that, that the total energy is the sum total of the potential plus the kinetic. And that is the law of conservation of energy. 
that the total energy in a system remains unchanged. We have energy transferred, energy transformed, but you neither gain energy or lose energy. And that's the law of conservation of energy. Can we now verify the conservation of energy by actually predicting the velocity at which these balls should go off the ramp? Well, we know that the total energy remains the same. So in other words, the, the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy must equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. Now we know that our initial energy is, was equal just to mgh. We had no kinetic energy. On the other side, we only had kinetic energy. There was no more potential energy, at least relative to the table. So I get a half mv squared on that side. Now, do you notice, do you notice what happens? m is constant here. So in other words, we can cancel out the m's. And what does that mean? Well, it basically means in an ideal situation that this setup of conservation of energy is independent of the mass. In other words, the velocity of the ball in this case is going to be the same regardless of what mass you have. So we have 9.8 as our acceleration due to gravity. We multiply it by the height, which is equal to 0.24. That is equal to a half V squared. Now, if I calculate V out from this situation, I'm gonna get a value of 2.16 meters per second. That should be the velocity of the ball that, oh, that goes off the ramp. But hold on here, I've got a value of 1.36 meters per second. Why is that? Well, that's because if you listened to the experiment, the total energy that I had put in the system wasn't just being converted to kinetic energy. There was also energy being released in terms of heat and sound. And so we need to allow for that as well. In other words, the situation isn't ideal. Let me explore it again by looking at the animation from FET. So now let's have a look at a more realistic situation where we have some friction involved. In other words, in this case, our skater is moving backwards and forwards, but in this case, we're losing a little bit of energy in terms of heat or thermal energy. And of course, this could also mean sound. If you were to have audio on for this, you would hear the wheels roll across the ramps. Again, we'll place our bar graph in there and our pie chart and put this on slow motion. I'm gonna make the friction relatively low, but I want you to notice what happens to the potential energy, kinetic energy, and in this case, the thermal energy as well. And most critically, what's happening to the total energy that we have. So you see the total energy still stays the same. But because now we're losing energy in terms of thermal energy, which we cannot transform back into the potential or kinetic energy, as a result, the skater doesn't end up going as high. As a result, the skater doesn't end up going as fast. In other words, the kinetic energy lowers. The potential energy lowers because we're now losing some energy in terms of thermal energy. Now, we haven't lost it. It's just been transformed into an, a form that we can't utilize. And so as a result, we have our decrease in potential and kinetic, but the total energy is still the same. The law of conservation of energy is still true. So why did they all leave at differing times? Now in our three ramps, they all have differing times because of the different accelerations that are occurring along each of their paths. They all start off with an initial velocity of zero and they all end up with a velocity of V at the end, but the accelerations are different. In terms of the white ramp, the white ramp's acceleration is relatively constant and I'm going to just call this A. Where I have here, I have a first acceleration, and that's actually a really small acceleration, and this is a slightly larger acceleration over here. With the blue ramp, we have a relatively high acceleration here, and then practically no acceleration here at the bottom, assuming it has a constant velocity. That means the time it takes for each of these things will be different. So in other words, the time here is going to be relatively large and here the time is going to be relatively uh, smaller as a result. With my acceleration in between, I'm going to have a time that is a set time. And in this case, this time is going to be somewhere in between the sum of those two times. And then with my blue ramp, I'm going to have a very small time over here. But depending on the length of my base here, I'm going to get a roughly larger time across here. Now, in our case, 
the sum of the times for each of the ramps results in the fact that the blue one is first, the white one is second, and the red one is third. So does that mean my blue path is the fastest optimal path in any situation? Well, the answer is no. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have a fourth track, and I didn't build this because it was a bit difficult for me to make this. So let's draw my path down like so, really quickly, and then it ends up being flat all the way to the end. That means I'm going to get a relatively short time here because the acceleration is actually really high. But my time across the bottom section is going to be relatively large. Why? It's already traveling at its maximum velocity, which is the same as the blue path, but it's now traveling much further. And so therefore, as a result, its time here is going to be bigger than the time that we had for the blue path. And so therefore, we would say, could argue that the blue ramp here is definitely faster than the green ramp. So is there a path that gets us from point A to point B in the shortest amounts of time? There is, but that's the subject of another video. So stay tuned for that. Well, I hope that's helped you understand the law of conservation of energy. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna look at the conservation of energy in terms of collisions, and I'm gonna use an air track to demonstrate that. So keep an eye for that. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please like, share and subscribe. Check out my website as well. Take care. Bye for now.